Political news with me, the, the Assistant Minister for Home Affairs, Alex Hawke, and this morning the opposition leader ruling out abolishing the private health insurance rebate after putting insurers on notice yesterday. What is your reaction to that? Well, Karen, nobody should believe anything Bill Shorten says about the private health insurance rebate. Yesterday he said he was going to slash it and as part of a Labor government in the future, Labor's one of their first actions would be to take action on private health insurance. So who can believe 24 hours later that they're not going to do anything? I think Australians know... Yesterday he, he didn't rule it out, but today he has. It's um, well, a quick well, move. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't believe he's going to do anything, not do anything on private health insurance, Karen, and I don't think Australians do either. If, you, if you're talking about cost of living pressures, if a Labor government abolishes or slashes or defunds the private health insurance rebate, um, the cost of living pressures on families will increase. Think about every family in Australia that's got private health insurance that accesses that rebate. Uh, that is real cost of living pressure increase if Labor is elected. So for, for Bill Shorten to raise it in his own speech, nobody else uh, raised it, he raised it, and then to say, oh no, I didn't mean yesterday when I was attacking the private health insurance rebate that I wasn't going to do anything. He knows that's not true. I think Australians know that's not true. And he's got to answer some but questions about some, this. He's some, some sensitivities. You, you'd accept that, the hip pocket pressures of, of I guess, thousands of people in your own electorate in Sydney, that it's a, a tough time where wages aren't keeping up with price increases. Well, people want to know what governments are going to do about it. And our Labor Party uh, proposes a renewable energy target that is so out of control that power prices will immediately increase and, and continue to increase. Power is the number one issue around those kitchen tables. How do we pay our power bills? The private health insurance rebate, if Labor slashes it, and Bill Shorten hasn't answered any questions about the private health insurance rebate. How much was the proposed slash? What plans have they got? What would they do with it? Uh, and they raised it in their own speech yesterday and then tried to tell people... Well, there are other ways to do with private health insurance in terms of reducing premium increases as requested by insurers. They've risen by 50 per cent since 2010. Absolutely and the government's made sure that those premium increases in the recent years have been lowest on record uh, and we're taking action with the insurers to make sure that costs come down. Uh, but it's pointing to massive profits in that in that space as well. Well the private health insurance system works to supplement the public system and if you slash the private health insurance rebate, if government takes action that, that diminishes the capacity of that to assist the public health system, the other problem you have is people flood back to the public system and the pressure on the public system increases. This is an issue for everybody and if Labor is going to undermine the private health insurance rebate, they have to be open and upfront. And Bill Shorten has to answer questions about the private health insurance While rebate. While Labor was the architect of the industrial relations system we have today in, in many respects they are saying developments in recent years have required and we heard Jim Chalmers make this case before a, a new uh, look at IR. Do you accept that some of the, the trends have not been benefiting workers enough in terms of bringing them with the economic growth that we've seen recently? Well, if Jim Chalmers and Bill Shorten and Labor are admitting responsibility for taking our IR system backwards 30 years, then good on them. It's about time they did so, because they did do that. They took our system back 30 years in government, and then, as they know, nobody has the ability to change it at the moment. What the government is focused on is economic growth, which has driven jobs growth. 400,000 jobs in a year. We are lifting the boat. We've cut company tax for small and medium Australian businesses under $50 million, which means Australian businesses are more competitive internationally. They're able to employ more people. That's the government's approach. Our approach is working. But Labor, if they're admitting culpability for our IR system and, and the big unions out, being out of control in terms of the lawlessness and all of the things they're doing around the country, well, absolutely, they're to blame. But, but your government's been in power now a number of years. This is the, the fifth year of the coalition government. Why haven't you dealt with something if you think it's 30 years out of date in terms of the IR system? I think the consensus on IR from business and from everyone around the country is to work with the current system and that's what the government has done. Uh, but the system has been handed to us by the Labor Party. We have focused on the big job we've been given by the last Labor government of repairing the budget. Uh, we have the welfare bill down, uh, opposed by Labor and Bill Shorten at every turn. We have economic growth up. We have jobs growth uh, through the roof. This is the, th the focus of the Turnbull government getting growth going, getting things moving and keeping uh, those pressures on families After down. the history, the recent history of, of, of work choices, for example, would the Coalition be willing to have a fight in this space, particularly in the face of what is a, quite a potent 
political message from Bill Shorten in relation to those, or the left behind society, as he put it yesterday? Well, we're not going to sign up to Labor's agenda, and Labor's agenda is code for the unions will have more say in the industrial relations system. That's the last thing the economy needs. And what it means is more strikes, more industrial action. And if you read carefully what Bill Shorten and Bill Chalmers, uh, and John, uh, Chalmers are saying, um, what they're saying is there's going to be an unprecedented round of strikes and industrial action in Australia if they're elected. That will be bad for the economy, bad for jobs and bad for our society. In the National Integrity Commission, it's hard to see how the government doesn't adopt this now. That is um, a political winner, isn't it? Well, we've already got measures in place and we've put some money into some of the anti-corruption bodies federally and we're considering carefully some of the committee reports. Um, what I would say You'll is... You'll do it, though. Well, what I will say is that uh, Bill Shorten yesterday spoke about the integrity of the Governor-General. Uh, now, I think uh, nobody I've heard has ever raised a question about the integrity of the Governor-General to me, and yet Bill Shorten, instead of talking about union corruption, which he knows a lot about, and um, talking about the lawlessness of the big unions, even judges and magistrates are saying many of these unions are out of control, he sits silent on real union corruption, but he's trying to focus our attention on corruption with the Governor-General. I don't think he understands our system, but I think Bill Shorten does understand that he's protecting his mates in the union movement. Mr Hawke, thanks for your time. Thanks Talk so much, Karen.